Welcome to the Exis Labs, where the future is now. spreading throughout the base, and if we don't act quickly, all could be lost. I understand you have a lot of questions, but I can't answer them right now. All I can say is, we need to get the teleporter in the next chamber working. But to do that, I need you to find a plasma inducer for the stabilizer bank. There's one in engineering. Now, if you head through the service tunnel, you can reach it. I'll unlock some doors. There. That will give you the necessary clearance. Now, please, get the inducer and hurry back. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry.
so you can make it back through operations.
back. The inducer is working perfectly, and the teleporter is ready for transport. Here's the situation. There's a teleporter outpost in the other dimension, and it's still operational. It's very powerful, and it has a range that could lead those demons all the way to Earth. I would disable it myself, but it requires two people to do it. One person at the outpost to initiate the teleporter, and another person here to transmit a power surge to destroy it. I know it's a lot to ask, but you'll need to go to the other dimension, find the remote outpost, and initiate the startup sequence. You're our only hope of defeating this evil. I've got the teleporter ready to go. All you need to do is go into the chamber and initiate the sequence. I'll handle the rest from here. But before you go, I want to give you my personal account of what happened here. It explains everything. The advanced teleporter, how the madness started, everything. It's over there on the console. Please take it. The world needs to know the truth. And good luck. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. My name is Dr. Richard Myers, and I'm a research specialist stationed in Nexus Labs. I don't know who'll be hearing this, but I wanted to alert someone of the disaster at Mars City. What has been unleashed across this base is an unimaginable evil, and we only have a slight chance of stopping it. The research I participated in was the next step in teleportation. To give context to my research, back in 2115, UAC researchers discovered an ancient Martian civilization. At the Urbis dig site, they found a Martian teleportation device. It was non-functional, and all attempts to start it proved fruitless. It took many years, but the researchers managed to learn enough from the device and other wall carvings to reverse engineer it. The first prototype teleporter, codenamed Project Mercury, was built in Delta Labs and became operational in 2139. This teleporter was only capable of short distance travel and limited quantities of matter transference. It could only teleport a single test subject, small animals and chimps usually, across a room. Once testing intensified and technical data increased, we were able to fabricate more powerful teleporters. In Delta Labs Sector 3, Project Gemini managed to increase teleportation across greater distances. In addition to the increased range, we found we could begin transporting human-sized subjects. It was during this stage we began to see the effects of opening up these portals to that strange dimension. Our scientific curiosity overruled the obvious warnings. And under Dr. Malcolm Betruger's direction, we continued experimenting. On Project Apollo, the engineers developed a room-sized teleporter in Delta Lab Sector 4. It was capable of teleporting a small-sized team to destinations on this new dimensional plane. The expedition teams began exploring and setting up small research outposts. We could only teleport small equipment with a Delta IV teleporter, and this condition frustrated Dr. Betruger. Soon after the success of Project Apollo, plans were drawn and work executed on a new facility. Exus Labs. At Exus Labs, the goal was to create a large teleporter, similar in scale to the one at Urbis. It would be powerful enough to transport large equipment, even dropships, and eventually shorten interstellar travel. Betruger was so impatient on seeing results from this research, he had the engineers start work on the teleporter once the facility reached 75% completion. We had expedition teams set up a teleporter outpost in the other dimension to link up with Exus. It was at this time I began investigating the strange stories I heard over at Delta Labs. I managed to hack undetected into Petruger's personal logs, and what I found scared me to the core. Petruger became obsessed with the findings of this new dimension. He started to push experiments regardless of the human cost. His log entries into the occult and how to harness evil powers were truly frightening. The more recent logs detailed how demons, yes, demons, contacted him through his dreams. 
offering him unimaginable powers. But they demanded he find a way to help them reclaim Earth. It was then I realized that this other dimension was hell itself. By the time I realized his plan, Petruger had started the invasion. Since the Exus teleporter hadn't reached sufficient functionality, I assume Betruger decided to launch the demon invasion on Mars without it. However, the Hell Outpost teleporter is operationally ready, and it's only a matter of time before Betruger decides to use it. I'm going to try to reach Chief Engineer Rhodes in the Enpro facility to divert enough power to Exus, and with a little luck, create a big enough power surge to destroy it from here. I can only pray God will forgive me for my part in all this and help me make things right. Lord, save my soul. Richard Myers, signing off. I have the teleporter sequence already configured. Just activate the main console. When you reach the outpost, I'll be able to communicate with you. Good luck. Systems activated. Teleportation will commence in T-minus three, two, one.